Try not to get hurt because we're going to be rolling through the river, feeling a little poke of a sword, and showing you who is introducing art to Vegas in a new way. This is Front Row Center. Welcome to Front Row Center. I'm Nakaya Berry. And I'm Deshella Balogan, and we've got a magical show for you guys today. Do you have something up your sleeve that I don't know about? No, I wish I did, but I'm terrible when it comes to the whole magic thing, so any trick I do won't be believable. So no. Well, there are some magicians here on the Strip who know how to do it well. Have you ever been to any of the magic shows yet? You know, I actually did go to Nathan Burton's show a few years ago, but I want to go to like Chris Angel's show or David Copperfield because they have so many good reviews. I heard about that. And I also want to check out magicians Murray Sawchuk and Matt Franco, who are doing much more than just pulling out rabbits out of hats. Matt Franco won America's Got Talent, right? That's right. You know, I saw him perform in person and he was absolutely amazing. I mean, he took out a deck of cards and he wrote on the card with like a Sharpie. And then all of a sudden what he wrote like just disappeared. I had to see that in person, but I couldn't imagine all of these shows to be possible without one of Vegas's original magical front men. Las Vegas has been known for many things, nightlife, gambling, and more. Most of all, show business. No one knows it better than Lance Burton the master magician. I was a professional stage magician for 31 years and I worked primarily in Las Vegas. I did 15,000 shows. As you get farther and farther away from being on stage every day, it gets harder yeah. to, to get up and do a show because you, you just don't do it every day. Although he's retired, he hasn't stopped moving. Lance is always working on something new and this time he sets his sights on something bigger, movie making. We're getting ready to do our world premiere of the uh, Billy Toppet Master Magician, which is my first feature film. So this is a new adventure. My co-author, uh, Michael Goudeau, and I wrote the screenplay in 2009, and we started filming in 2010. So it's taken five years uh, to bring this thing to the goal line, <laughs> to the finish line. He's been a magic consultant for several films. The most recent one was Oz the Great and Powerful. Now that he has his own movie, he's putting it towards a great cause. Nevada SPCA is a terrific organization. They have a no-kill animal shelter. The Variety Children's Charity is another one I support. Uh, and the Shriners, of course. One thing you'd never know about Lance is that he's adopted seven cats. Five of them were blind, and he managed to nurse them back to health. For Front Row Center, I'm Mateo Holland. We're here with Cookie Watkins, Tina Turner tribute artist. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. Are you going to get us rolling I'm today? Gonna get you. No, we're not going to roll too much, but we're going to do some <laughs> special things. Okay. Some special things, maybe. We'll see. So uh, what inspired you to become a tribute artist, and why did you pick Tina Turner? Well, the story is, I was a singer first. I was a uh, performer on Broadway. I did a show called Beehive, which I portrayed Tina Turner. Okay. And people used to come and see me in the village in New York and see me on Broadway. And they say, oh, my God, you're so much like Tina. And I'm going, yeah, but Tina's a wild woman. I'm not like that. <laughs> you know, and then Tina was making her comeback. And when songwriters decided to look for material for her, they said, there's a lady who sounds just like Tina. She even looks a little like her. And her name is Cookie. So they found me, and I sang on about three demos for Tina Turner. Oh. And what happened was when she heard them, she said, who is that? Who's that voice? That voice? She said. She approved. Yeah. I mean, she <laughs> was listening to it. It was like mirroring herself. So what happened was she said, I'm going to meet her. So she came to New York for 10 days to do a uh, show at the Ritz. And they had me, set me up to come and meet her. And it's been history ever since. And you met her. I met her. How was it? It was, you know what? It was really funny because she was sitting in her dressing room with all these roses and stuff. And she had a hat, like a little Applejack hat on. And I walked in with who knows what I had on <laughs> back then, those crazy days. And um, she just started laughing. And I said, why is she laughing at me? And she said, it's not so much that I know who you are, but you look like me. 
You know, and I said, well, okay, I guess I do, but you're Tina Turner, I'm Cookie, so moving right <laughs> along, you know, that's what it was. But just like I said, I um, was always had similarities of her, and um, when I came to Vegas, I did a show called Beehive Again, almost 20 years later. Oh. I don't know how I pulled that one off. I must have felt but you did at it. home. I did it. I sure did. And um, what happened was the show closed, and when it was time for me to go home, back to New York, a producer by the name of Johnny Stewart had a show called Legends in Concert, decided to uh, call me up and say, I hear that you're a Tina Turner. And I said, no, I'm Cookie, <laughs> and who are you? And he explained who he was. He explained his show. And um, from there on, I started working for Legends in Concert. And it's what, I've been in Vegas now 21 years. I left wow. my home in New York. And wow. I'm sure it took a lot to get down all of her moves. Well, you know what? Yeah, in heels. I could do it in sneakers. But I mean, to do it in heels, it's, uh, it's, uh, it takes something. And I'll tell you what, thank God I have not sprung, broke, tore anything yet. Okay. Never. So let's knock on wood. Somebody find some wood. <laughs> <laughs> So you ready to perform? Yeah. All right. All right. We'll let you get to All it. All right. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Are you ready for me? Well. Caught because I need you. My heart's on fire. Come to me. Come to me. Why? Everything I need Cause you are You sound just like her. Do it was I? Am- no, really. It was am- and then the facial expressions, because that, that's what reminds me of her the most. You know, the facial expression? Really? Oh, yes. Should I use this anymore? Oh, I don't need this. You're fine. Yeah. fine. I'm mic'd anyway. Okay, <laughs> yes, I do. Well, thank you so much. So where can we expect to see you performing next? Get a plane ticket. And you can come and go with me to Australia. <laughs> oh, Australia. No, actually, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be leaving on the 14th of November for Australia. And actually, that's just the rehearsal space. My show is in New Zealand. Oh. For one night. All right. So and we'll look I'll out for back. you there. Yeah, you better. <laughs> but when I come back, you know, I will keep, like, you know, I don't have a website. People just kind of, I don't know. I know you. Osmosis. They know me. <laughs> just, that's it, girl. They just know me. And they call me and say, are you home? And yeah, where are you working? You know, but uh, hopefully I'll do some things here in town. But I like working out the country a lot because that's where Tina works. And her on, you know, her fan base is out the country, so. That's where I have to go. Well, thank you so much for being well, here. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. That was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right, so don't go anywhere after the break. We're going to fill you in on everything the link has to offer. If you're a man over 50, you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. Follow through and check your skin. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. 
the Las Vegas entertainment community got together in costume for a charity event that supports our furry little friends. Everybody's here, it's so crowded. There's food, there's drinks, there's live performances going on. This is the place to be tonight. Lindy Studios, a premier digital media production studio, hosted its first annual Howl and Prowl Bash, a Halloween charity event benefiting the NSPCA, the Nevada Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. It's great because all these poor little animals, they can't help themselves, and so they need people to actually help them. So I really believe in fair treatment, leather, not leather, and faux fur. One act of kindness goes not just a long way, it can go a lifetime. They provide a lot of unconditional love and it's really important that we take care of them. I rescue a lot of dogs and I support anything to do with saving animals, so that's the main reason I'm here. And of course, studios, I do TV a lot, so I'm all about studios and pets, that's what it's all about. And, and we heard there was a party. And we heard there was a party, <laughs> yes. The event had a costume contest, live entertainment, and a non-profit casino night and auction. Everything's scary, everything's spooky, we have cobwebs around us. This is a red carpet, maybe that's just covered in blood. I don't even know. It's Halloween. It's fun to get dressed up and go out and just play. But this is the way we usually go out. As much as I enjoy seeing everyone festive in their costumes, I don't mind being in street clothes. I like that, it's comfortable. And I, and I did a painting to raise uh, some money for the NSPCA. We're blending the auction in with the entertainment, which is a lot different than the than having an auction that just starts and stops. Doing something positive to raise enough funds, which my goal in my mind is $30,000 or more. For the animals, let's make a difference. Lindy Studios aims to bring Hollywood into Las Vegas. Even though it's an old city, it's very young when it comes to movie, commercial, music video production. People don't realize Vegas is, is a big city, but it really isn't. It's like a little village. We support each other and we, uh, you know, you have to do that in, in a community setting because what I help you and you help me, that's, that's how we all, you know, rise to the next level. Reporting for Front Row Center, I'm Nakaya Berry. I'm here with the Director of Marketing of The Link and High Roller, Lindsay Santa. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. So I love the link, all the different restaurants and activities that you guys have to do there. My favorite part is that you don't have to walk through a casino to get to everything. That's great. Yeah, that's one of the biggest features of the link is it's this outdoor promenade that people have easy access to, but it's right in the middle of the strip. So you have the convenience of the casinos without having to go through them. Yes. So tell us, for those who don't know about the Link Promenade or the High Roller, mm -hmm. what, is, what does it have to offer? So some of the great things about the Link is it's just a very unique environment for Las Vegas. Again, it's the outdoor space, so you get a little bit of the open. You get to see kind of everything that Vegas has to offer, but in a different and kind of eclectic, fun, cool way. So one of the things with the Link we really wanted to do is have all of these restaurants and bars that were very unique to Vegas or had a little bit something special that maybe isn't available elsewhere inside of some of the hotels and casinos and then we wanted to kind of anchor it with this really unique feature that ended up being the high roller which is this 30 minute ride largest observation wheel in the world and because it offers these 360 views it's one of the best spots to really check out the Las Vegas Valley in all of Vegas because you have things that are completely unparalleled that you can't see if you're at other high-level destinations looking out at Vegas yeah, as a Las Vegas native, mm -hmm. it was really exciting being seeing it being built. Yeah. I mean, one pot at a time, and it's the largest one in the world, so mm -hmm. that's a big thing to claim Amazing. for Vegas. <laughs> yeah. How are people enjoying that ride? What is the experience like inside? It's great. One of the really great things about the High Roller 2 and the experience in Cabin is that so much of it is customizable. So even if you go from day to night, it's a completely different experience for you. At day, you'll see a lot more of what we we have to offer in the valley. It's pretty amazing because you'll see people checking out the mountains and all of these things around the valley that especially tourists maybe aren't as familiar with. They only think of
of Las Vegas is the Strip. But when you ride it during the day, you get to experience and witness all of that. And then at night, it comes a little bit more alive. It's more of a party atmosphere, and you get to see the lights of the city. We also offer happy half-hour cabins that have the in-cabin bars for you know the guests 21 and up. That's a great feature and something that guests certainly enjoy. But we also do groups, birthday parties, kids' parties, business functions. It really is you know kind of cheesy, but the sky's the limit because we have so many different add-ons that we can provide that really help enhance the guest experience. It's great. So with the high roller and the promenade, how are you how do you think you're changing the views of Vegas? So I think one of the things going into the development of the link and the high roller that we really wanted to do was embrace the locals and the tourists who really want a well-rounded hospitality experience. You know, like you said, you don't go through the casino for it. We wanted to offer those things that people are now really starting to come to Vegas for, the dining, the entertainment, the nightlife, the shopping. So it, we just kind of embraced that and we wanted it to also feel like it's a little bit of a cultural hub in and kind of infuse it a little bit more with art and music and those sorts of things. So you feel like it maybe could be someplace you could go in your hometown, this great neighborhood corner area, but it definitely has the Las Vegas amplified twist to it. Yeah, it's great for tourists and mm -hmm. locals. Exactly. And I like walking through and seeing the, di the diversity in age. Mm -hmm. It really is. We've got something for everybody. And you are in charge or overseeing the, all of the marketing promotions mm -hmm. there. How's that experience been? It's great. We have so much versatility there, which is the really nice thing. Because you know you look at the promenade, and it in and of itself is essentially a venue. And then we also have places like Brooklyn Bowl and Tilted Kilt and Yard House and Off the Strip and the Wheel itself at the High Roller that provide us other areas to be able to host events and activities and really have a lot of fun and keep things fresh and different. And even all the artwork as you walk mm -hmm. through, you can't help but notice that. How did exactly. that get there? Who is it by? So we've partnered with ISI Group, which is this really great local kind of art community. And the guys over there are amazing at curating local and regional artists who really have their own distinctive style and perspective that are able to come in and turn these blank walls that now are these amazing canvases of work and works of art. So we've kind of gone through this um, kind of period where every couple months we refresh in it. So we're currently actually on Facebook phase four, so all of the previously existing art pieces are now getting redone into completely new. So it gives people the chance to come back and see the new artwork time and time again. All right, well I have to definitely come back and see that. Anything else we can expect to look forward to from the link or the high roller? You know, I think some of the great things about us is really just kind of continually to evolve what there is to offer so that locals and tourists do want to come back. So we have a lot happening with things like music. We've launched this amazing um, street music program that happens daily where it's a lot of incredibly talented up-and-coming artists who come and perform throughout the promenade. It's been a lot of fun. The guests really are responding to it. So that's something that's just going to get bigger and better. You know, continuing with the art program on top of just having the murals there all the time. We now have live art that's, you know, taking care of every Thursday night. That's a lot of fun. And then with the high roller, we're always programming and doing new things around events and holidays to just add something fresh and new for everybody to be able to enjoy. All right, a lot to look forward to. Thank Absolutely. you so much for coming. Thank you. And we have to take a stroll through the link, but now I suggest you use this break to get prepared for combat. We'll be right back. At that moment, it hit me. This is why I joined the Guard. I couldn't believe it. I just saved a life. Somebody from my hometown. Be there for your community at NationalGuard.com. Right now, we're here with Frank Van Dyke and James Bowie from the Red Rock Fencing Center. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Of course, of course. And James, you didn't come too far because you're a UNLV student here on campus. Yes, that's correct. I actually have class after this. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll let you guys get to it. <laughs> and, how, and I don't hear about fencing too often, so. Well, it is a European sport. And you know our heritage was grown on guns, but um, this is a sport that is uh, very popular and uh, growing exponentially here within the U.S. Okay, and um, tell us about it. You have the scoreboard here. Then you have the fencing outfits. What? How does it work? What we have here is a fencing scoring machine, and that's going to tell us whether who got the touch and who didn't get the touch. And every time that we compress a spring-loaded tip, it completes an electrical circuit. Therefore 
showing you that we got the touch. Because fencing is actually much faster than the eyes can follow. Mm -hmm. So that's why we brought the scoring machine along with us. Who's How did win? you guys get into it? Well, I got into it in college. Um, there were two girls fencing on the campus quad and <laughs> they noticed I was watching them and they invited me in and they said, would you like to give it a try? And I, I did. And they just beat, beat me real bad. <laughs> so I was really hooked and I uh, wanted to know more about it. And uh, then I, I took a course in it and I never looked back from there. Okay, and what would you say it takes to become a fencer? A lot of money. You have to, no, I'm kidding. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> yeah, really I'm kidding. Um, what it takes is, is it's a very cerebral oriented sport. So it's a high speed chess game. You're going to be uh, moving a lot, it's very aerobic, you're going to sweat, and uh, you're thinking a lot with a weapon in your hand. So it's a high speed problem solving. It's really what it comes down to. If like you like chess. to do that kind of stuff, then, then you're good for it. Well, I'm excited to see it. <laughs> so we'll let you guys show us how it's done. Well, well, thank you. You're right, it was. It was really fast. It, it was. It reminded me of like a like boxing or something, you know, because you're like trying to I'm cover sure yourself and everything. Technique. Oh yeah. Well, what can you like teach someone who doesn't know anything about fencing? Like, what are some cool, fast like techniques you can teach us about it? Well, um, one of the biggest things I would say is a faint disengage, which is essentially if you're going to attack in one direction, they can see it. They're going to block it, right? You can keep trying this. It's probably not going to work because they're going to block you and then hit you. But if you fake them in this direction, they're blocking it. You go under and then continue in. That's it. So it's essentially a very high speed rock, paper, scissors. Are they going to block? Are oh. they not? Right. So if you block, just gauge they block again. And step so in. you have to be really like, like so tactical. You have to really like pay yeah. attention to it. So, I mean, the first time it might work. You might beat their blade, come in, hit. They're expecting that now, so you beat, you come in, they parry, and then they repost and hit you. So now you think, how am I going to get around that? Beat, hit, get around. Wow. You're trying to stay one step ahead of your opponent. Yep. So you can do what is called progressive style fencing. You start off with a simple motion, just straight out and hit. From there, they're going to parry you, they're going to block you. So therefore, then you would then disengage, go around them. They're going to know that. So now you're going to do a double disengage. So you're trying to stay one step ahead. OK. Wow. OK. So how can people get involved? Well, the easiest way is uh, um, to take a, uh, a course called Introduction to Fencing. And uh, there's a Groupon uh, coupon for that. We have to snatch that Groupon. <laughs> um, easiest way is to take an a Introduction to Fencing course. Uh, that we have, and from there they'll learn all three blades, because there's foil, epee, and saber. Okay. Yeah, I only started uh, with that intro class about one and a half years ago, and um, now I'm sort of competing at a national level at North American Cups, etc., wow. and a uh, no national, um, regional, and local one as well, because we actually do host quite a bit of tournaments and uh, events 
uh, throughout the year. So this is something okay. you do like all the time? All like the time. It's like yeah. a weekly <laughs> thing. Okay, cool. It's well, six days a week. We definitely look forward to trying this and hopefully some more of you guys will try it. Thank you for coming. Thank, Thank you for, for having us. us. And fencing is a very unique activity for you to do, but I have another one for you too. Take a look. In historic Boulder City, Nevada, you can ride the Nevada State Railway excursion train at the Nevada State Railroad Museum. Welcome aboard, everybody. This Boulder branch line was constructed by the Union Pacific Railroad to service the Boulder Dam project so you can experience history dating back to the 1930s. Sure. Alright. Alright, Black Tiger. I hope to see you riding the rails. Thanks for stepping out with me. I'm Nakaya Berry. What's trending, Deshola? Star Wars Episode 7 is what's trending. I mean, the movie isn't even out yet, and it's already breaking records. That's right. It broke the IMAX record for the most movie pre-sales. It already has more than $6.5 million just in pre-sale tickets. Yep, it outbeat first day sales for The Dark Knight Rises, The Avengers, and The Hunger Games. And those are all pretty good movies. Yeah. It's incredible how Star Wars has such a large and dedicated fan base. Am I going to see you fighting with a lightsaber soon? Uh, well, I mean, to be honest, I've never seen any of the movies. But you guys don't worry because there's so much buzz around it that I'm going to have to check it out. Me too. I guess that gives me a chance to admit that I haven't seen any of them either. Yeah, <laughs> we have some catching up to do. No, seriously. So if you guys want to help explain the storyline to us, tweet us or leave us a comment on Facebook. Yeah, show us your lightsaber poses on Instagram and make sure to hashtag FRCLV. And always remember, this is where art and entertainment collide. I'm Deshella Balogan. And I'm Nakaya Berry. See you next week, Las Vegas. Mm.